We've been looking at parabolas a bit recently, right? And we've been so far singing the praises of approaching things and thinking through things parametrically, right? Using this guy, um, 2AP, AP squared, or 2AT, AT squared, or 2AQ, AQ squared, all that kind of thing. And all of the strengths and uh, insights that you gain from saying things in that way, okay? But that doesn't mean that thinking about things without the parameter, just with the x and y's, just thinking in Cartesian terms, that doesn't mean there's nothing to gain there. In fact, one of the most interesting results which we get in this course comes from just going back to this old way of thinking, older way of thinking, and thinking of it in terms of x and y's. So here's a simple question. Thank you. And we don't need any parameters or anything to give this a go. So we're going to try it. We're going to generalize from there, like for an unknown parabola and an unknown point, and then following on from there tomorrow um, is where we're going to finish and um, show you one of the most interesting results in the whole course. So, how would you tackle this question? You have plenty of tools at your disposal. What would be your first step? Yeah. Um, bring the four to the other side, so you isolate the y. Okay, good. So, x squared equals four y. This is kind of written in like locus form, right? That you can see the, um, what's the focal length of this parabola? Just reading it off. A is gonna be one, right? Because four a y, a must be one in this case, okay? But in order to work with it in Cartesian terms, to differentiate and that kind of thing, I want y to be the subject, because then I can get dy on dx, etc. okay? So I'm going to write this, and from there, I can differentiate. What's the derivative of this guy? Uh, x on two, x on two. Okay, excellent. That, um, that two's gonna come out the front, it's gonna cancel partly with the four, so I just get that. And you notice, I wrote dy on dx, not just equals, okay? Right, that's good. What am I going to do with this derivative? Um, yeah. With the x coordinate of the point that you want to find the tangent from. Fantastic. So you find the um, gradient of that point by subbing in the x. Okay, excellent. So I know this is the gradient at any point on the parabola, but I want the specific one here. So I'll say at x equals 2, I can find, I can evaluate my derivative, and that gives me 1. It's a nice, simple example. Okay? So now I have all the pieces I need, right? Like in order to get the equation of a line, I have a point, I have a gradient. gradient. So I'm gonna chuck it into point gradient. This is not complicated, let's give this a quick shot. So I've got y minus y1, which is one, equals m, the gradient, which is one, outside of x take away two, good. Um, just a teeny little bit of simplifying, but I'm gonna add one to both sides, which leaves me with x minus 1. So far so good, no sweat off my back. That's happy, you can check it out, you can really simply graph it, it's not complicated, no big deal. I want to generalize from this, right? This is for a specific parabola and a specific point, okay? So if we have some kind of general parabola, right? So this is generalizing. Okay? I want to come up with like a formula for this kind of thing. Just like we have the equation of a line with a given gradient and through a given point, can I do some generalization to have like a, an equivalent y minus y1 equals m outside of x minus x1 for this problem, okay? So generally speaking, I would say for x squared equals 4ay, so this could be any parabola, right? And let's pick a point, okay? So a point, if I say it's anywhere, we might call that x coordinate x1, right? I can do that. Now, it wouldn't be that unusual to call this next point well, y1, right? x1, y1. But as you'll see, right, x1 and y1 are not really two separate numbers, are they? Right? They are linked together through this equation. And we're going to take advantage of that in a second. Okay? I'm going to go through much the same steps, but I'm just going to have more abstract stuff in there, more algebra, because I don't know what any of these numbers are. Okay? So I'm going to make y the subject just like I did before. So I'm going to get a derivative out of this, aren't I? I had a equals 1 here, right? a equals 1. And that's really down the bottom. So this is actually going to be x on 2a. Are you satisfied with that? Now, I want this at a particular point, namely x1, y1, right? So at that point, at x equals x1, right? So that's a value now. What is the derivative equal to? Do you want the x? is equal to, mm, because X, algebra, X1. Yeah, there's, there's nothing I can really do to this thing. Like I can't simplify anything because I don't know any of these numbers yet. 
Okay, so that's good. So now I can pop this into the same kind of form I had before, right? Y minus Y1 equals, now what's my gradient here? X1 on 2A. X1 on 2A outside of X, X minus X1. You okay with that? Hmm. Okay. Now, how would you rewrite this? How would you make this a bit simpler? There's a few different ways. Have a go. I'll give you a second to catch up because some of you are still writing. What would you do here? I can make it. Can There's make a few it. different things you could do. You can make it so that the gradient is equal to gradient. You, you could. <laughs> I want you, to, you know, I've given you forms before. I'd say, okay, I want you to get it in this particular form. I'm leaving the door open. Like, this is where we started. How would you write this to maximize the simplicity that you could get out of this? I'm sure. If you play with it a little bit, that's okay. Let me rehearse where most of you are up to. I think most people see probably multiplying by 2a, that's probably a good idea because then I'll get rid of fractions, right? So most of you have something like this 2ay minus 2ay1. And on the right hand side, I can expand this as well. I've got an x, x1 there, and I've got x1 multiplied by itself there. Okay? Now from this point, it's not really that clear what to do. Like, there are no more like terms. There's not much point factorizing because I just expanded. I, mean, I could factorize, but that just sends me back where I came from. Okay. Remember I said to you okay, that x1 and y1, they are two numbers, but they're linked. They are linked. They are linked through... Oh, where'd my red go? Doesn't matter, this will do. These two are linked through this equation. Right? What that means is, for instance, since this point should, is on this parabola, right? It satisfies this. Right? Like if I put these numbers in here, it should be a true statement. So if all I do is just put those in, right? I can write x1 squared, that's my x value, equals 4ay1. Do you agree with that? Like all I'm doing is just putting that point, which is on the parabola, I'm putting it into the equation for the parabola. Now the reason why this is useful is because I have an x1 squared here, and I have some a y ones over here, so things are going to get simpler for me. This thing, which sort of you're like, what can I do with this? Well, you can get rid of it, right? So my next line, I'm going to write it up here. I've got two a y minus two a y one. That's going to simplify in a second. Equals x x one minus four a y one. Are you happy with that? Is that okay? All right, now I only need to do a little bit of shimmying to this to get it into a nice spot. I'll collect all of these like terms, these guys and these guys. Right? I guess I'll add 4a, y1 to both sides. That'll give me this. Gee, that's all right. That's looking pretty simple, right? I'm going to do one more thing to it because it looks like I should keep the y's together. Y's are in a nice spot. Uh, this x, x1, I'll make that, <coughs> excuse me, the subject. And now I'm going to factorize because this is helpful, right? This, this, you can put a big box around this. Uh, I do have my red. This is our generalization, right? After all of this work, after differentiating, jamming all together, and trying to make it as simple as we can, getting rid of like these awkward terms in here. This is really elegant. All you need is the coordinates of the point and this focal length here. It's all you need, right? By using this, it kind of even takes out of the equation. I don't need to differentiate anymore. I can just go straight here. Watch, let's give this a go. That was the question we started with, right? And you already told me right at the beginning that a is equal to one, yes? Let's just try it out, see what happens. X, x1, what's x1 again? It's two. Equals two times, one, y plus one, okay, let's have a go. I've got a two there and a two there, right? Bam, bam, x equals y plus one, make y the subject. It just falls out, like you hardly <coughs> even need it to work. You just need to substitute a little bit and Bob's your uncle, okay? Now, speed and efficiency are one of the strengths of this equation here. Right? This is the equation of the tangent in Cartesian form. If you like, you can put it next to your x equals, uh, sorry, y equals px minus ap squared, which is your parametric form of the same thing. Okay? But you can see it feeds in quite different information. There's no parameters here. So that's how you remember this is not the parametric form. 
okay? Now, like I said, speed and efficiency are one of the good things about this, but there's even more cool stuff and we'll find out about it tomorrow.